Hello, my name is Tatlewin Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch. I'm an author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And uh, this evening I thought I'd chat to you again about um, how a person knows they're a witch. This is the second stage. I did an another one earlier. Um, and I thought I'd talk about this business about magic and power because when we're starting out on our path, one of the things, and it really gets my goat, is when you get these people who are so full of themselves that they start trying to put other people down. Now what you have to remember about that is you know, there's only one reason people do that and that's to make themselves feel better. They do not like a challenge. So if you find yourself on the receiving end of this kind of treatment, just remember it's their problem, it's not yours. Okay? Uh, you get people say things like, oh yes, 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 but you know, magic is all very well being. You've got to have the power. I've got the power. Oh, well, I mean, have they? We have a great phase where I come from. Bollocks, they do. They don't. Um, it's just a, a kind of a way to put people down. And you do have to be aware of it because when you start looking, you are quite vulnerable at the beginning. You know, it's a little bit like the, um, the butterfly coming out of its chrysalis. The first hour or so, it's still drying its wings off and trying to find its bearings, you know, and then it's it's very vulnerable. Um, and in the same way, we're vulnerable. So you do have to think about these things. Don't allow people to put you down and query their motives if they do. I know sometimes, I mean, I can be very sharp-tongued. I know that. I'm not proud of it, but I can be sometimes. I, you know, I have a fairly short sort of uh, fuse for some things. But, you know, when people want to know things, um, I'm always happy to try and point them in the right direction. Um, it does get very difficult sometimes because there are people who just keep coming back and back and back. They really, you know, they don't do anything for themselves. They just want to keep asking. And as I said before, you do have to do a lot of the work yourself. And the reason for that is because only you can do it. Nobody else can walk your path for you. Nobody else, because it's your path. And I think this is the first thing, you know, if you're feeling, well, how do I know if I'm a witch or what have you? I think, first of all, you do have to feel that you would like to walk a path. That is important. I think you have to feel there are paths out there and you're going to go and have a look for them. I mean, some people go through their lives and it's almost like they've got blinkers on, you know, like this. They don't look either side and they don't see anything. It's just tunnel vision. They don't, they're not interested. If you told them, oh, look, there's a spiritual path over there, they'd say, oh, forget it you know so that's the first thing I think you do have to because being a witch is not just about casting spells in fact something I found was that the older I got um, the more I didn't need to cast spells and I think that's because you almost settle into the right frame of mind it's a bit like someone who cooks a lot you know in the end you get used to the recipe you don't need to pull the book out and go and look for it in the index because you know what, what you need. I need, you know, four ounces of this and two ounces of that and a pinch of something else and you know what it is. And it's the same thing with magic. You don't need to keep doing it. But equally, I don't think I need to justify myself either. I'm, I'm not interested in saying to people, oh, I've got loads of power, you know. <sighs> Who cares? You know, it's, it's not what it's about. It's, it's not about trying to measure who's the greatest of them all. It's, that's nonsense. That belongs in the Snow White fairy tale. You know? Um, so, I think when you're starting out, when you feel you might be a witch, I think you become more aware of unusual things. I think you become more aware of the world around you. I think you have to. I think that's one of the things that happens. It's almost like somebody has opened your eyes or opened the curtains. Or clean the windows. Um, it's that kind of feeling that suddenly you're starting to look around and you don't have to be massively active in the craft. You don't have to be casting spells all the time. You know I think there's nothing more to me nothing more depressing than somebody saying well I've got this herb and that herb and I've got an amethyst crystal what can I do with them? What do you want to do? I mean, are you seriously telling me you're going to cast a spell just because you have a bunch of lavender, a bunch of rosemary and an amethyst? It doesn't work like that. Of course it doesn't. But if you say, 
I'd like to do a cleansing spell. Lavender is brilliant for that. Lavender gets its name from Navare, the Latin to, to wash. Brilliant for cleansing. Um, I personally find amethysts are very good for creativity, but that's my own reaction to them. Other people might find they're quite different. So partly it's through observation, through reading, but partly it's your own needs. I mean, when I moved to this house, um, it's an incredibly active house. I mean, we're coming just to the end of September now when I'm filming this, and we're going to go into October, and October the veil thins out, and wow, you know. October this end of the year, April and May the other end, and all sorts of stuff happens. And we've got a full moon at the moment, so, you know, <laughs> hang on for a bumpy ride. But it doesn't matter. So when I came here, I had to sort of brush up on my protecting, protection spells and my cleansing spells. And not to banish things, I don't believe in that, but just to clean things up a little bit and give it a good psychic spring clean and we could, we could get started from there. And that was fine. But that was the spell I needed to do. I didn't go and say, well, I've got Bay in the garden and I've got Rowan. Well, Rowan is great for cleansing, as it happens, you know, and protection. But uh, I've got this and I've got that. It doesn't work like that, okay? Open your eyes. How do you know you're a witch? A witch keeps her eyes open. A witch keeps her ears listening. A witch is always trying to be aware. I mean, we miss it sometimes. I do. But it doesn't matter. The point is you're trying. And that's another way. How do I know I'm a witch? I'm aware. I'm looking. I'm listening. I can hear things. I can sense things. I can feel things. So there we are. That's part two. Something to think about. And I do hope you enjoy your path, whatever you choose. And I hope you find yourselves as witches. Thank you very much for listening. Good night.